All right, for cardiovascular examination, like every other examination, we must always greet, greet our patients. You know, greet, create rapport, introduce, and ask for permission, okay? And for cardiovascular examination, you must position your patient, okay? Not only that the patient must be in anatomical position, the patient must also be in cardiac position, okay? So you must be seen to be adjusting the, the bed to a cardiac position. Even if you cannot adjust, you must tell your examiner that you wish to adjust the, the head of the bed to a cardiac position and he might say go ahead, all right? So always adjust the head of the bed to the cardiac position for cardiovascular examination. So we we'll begin cardiovascular examination. The cardiovascular examination slightly differs from other examinations in that we go from vascular to cardiac, okay? So the first thing we do cardiovascular examination is the pulse. We examine the pulse, okay? In pulse, in checking the pulse, we want to know the rate, the rhythm, and the synchronicity. All right. So for the rate, we place our hands, the, the palmar part of our fingers, over the radial pulse, and we time for 15 seconds and multiply by four. While palpating, we also want to know the rhythm of the pulse. Okay. I also try to get the synchronicity. So while getting the synchronicity, while examining, we also place our other hand over the radial pulse of the other limb. I want to check the synchronicity, so just to check it for three seconds. Know if they are synchronous, if they beat together, or if there's a delay, the radial delay. Also, we also check for the femoral pulse, all right? Check if there's a, a radio femoral synchrony, or is a radio femoral delay, all right? A synchrony, all right? So after that, we move on. We slightly adduct the upper limb to examine for the for locomoto brachialis on the media aspects of the elbow all right next up we quickly want to check the blood pressure of the patient now you use a cuff an appropriate size cuff okay and the first thing we do we inflate so we inflate the cuff while palpating the radial pulse okay so this is the palpatory method for blood pressure measurement okay so we inflate the cuff while we palpate the the radial pulse okay so once we stop feeling the pulse, we, we inflate further 20 millimeters of mercury higher. Okay? Then we place our stethoscope and place it in the cubital fossa. Okay? And we must be seen to, to be deflating slowly. Alright? Okay, so that's that. So after that, we remove the cuff. This is an aneroid sphygmo manometer, but in your examinations, you may be given a mercury sphygmo manometer, so you must know how to use it. All right. So for this, for the purpose of this demonstration, we're using an aneroid sphygmo manometer. All right. So next up, we want to look at the jugular venous pulsation. All right. So we ask the patient to look right to look the other way, okay? So Mr. Desmond, please, can you look? Look the other way. Turn your neck and face the other way. Thank you. And we'll look at the neck. Most of your patients you're going to get are not going to have um, prominent ju jugular venous pulsation. So if it is not, if there's no um, jugular venous pulsation, you just move on to the other examination. If there is, however, if you see a visible pulsation, you want to confirm that it is a jugular venous pulsation. And if it is, you must measure. So to confirm, you can just do a simple abdominal jugular reflex, okay? So if we palpate the abdomen over the right hypochondriac area and the jugular venous position becomes more prominent, then it is actually the, the, the jugular vein that is um, um, pulsating and not the carotid, okay? So we want to know what exactly the pulsation is. If it is not prominent, then we'll ask the patient to turn and continue the examination. So Mr. Desmond, can you just turn? Thank you. 
all right? So next up, we inspect the precordium. The precordium of, is the chest, the area of the chest just overlying the heart, okay? So we look at the precordium. Is the precordium normal? Is it normal active? Is it quiet? Is it hyperactive, okay? So if we see any precordial activity, we we'll, we'll just look at, look at the precordium, okay? So after inspecting the precordium, next is we'll palpate, all right? So the first palpation we'll do, we'll place, place um, the examining hand over the left hemothorax, okay? Just para, the parasternal area, all right? So what we place, we want to feel if there are murmurs at the area, the corresponding areas, okay? So we'll start with this, okay? If we don't feel any murmurs, we'll move like this. If we don't feel any murmurs, we'll get to this point, all right? So when we place our hands this way, We'll now try to identify where we can feel the, the apex beats, all right? So if we can identify it with a finger, tip of your finger, would we'll count what rib it is, okay? So the second rib is attached to the manubrosternal junction. So when we we'll identify the manubrosternal junction, junction sternal angle of Lewis, would the rib, the second rib is attached to it. So the intercostal space just below is the second intercostal space. Then we'll move second intercostal space third intercostal space, fourth intercostal space, fifth intercostal space, all right? So once we get where it is, the fifth intercostal space, or wherever the, the apex bit is, we'll try and draw an imaginary line to connect the clavicle, okay? So we want to know if it's middle clavicular line, if it is two centimeters lateral to the middle clavicular line, Okay, if it's on the axial axillary line, middle axillary line, or posterior axillary line, okay? So we want to identify, we want to locate the apex bit, all right? So that's for palpation. Now, do we percuss the chest in cardiovascular examination? No, it is not, it is not conventionally done, all right? So we we'll move on to auscultation. So in auscultation, we also remember to listen, listen over the areas, over the areas of the corresponding valves, A, P, T, M, aortic, pulmonary, tricuspid, and mitral. The aortic area is the second, is the second intercostal space right to the sternum. Okay? Second intercostal space, right sternal border. So second intercostal space, left sternal border, we have the pulmonary, okay? Second intercostal, um, fourth intercostal space, left sternal border, we have the tricuspid, and we have the mitral around the fifth intercostal space or fourth inter fifth inter intercostal space mid clavicular line. Okay, so we we'll listen at those areas to pick up murmurs. Okay, the heart sound, we want to get the heart sound. Okay, so we want to know what heart sounds we hear. Do we hear S1 and S2? Do we hear, do we get any more more? We must always identify that. And which, if we get a more more, where is it loudest? Is it loudest at the aortic area, the pulmonary area, tricuspid area, or at the mitral area? Okay, so that's what we do in auscultating for the chest in cardiovascular examination. Next up, furthermore, we want to examine the chest, the abdomen, and check for pedal edema. Those will help us to identify other symptoms of heart failure, okay? So we want to examine for the chest. In examining the chest, we just want to listen to the breath sounds at the three lung zones, okay? So breathe in, out. 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 Okay. So, we've listened to the chest, we've auscultated the chest. So after examining the chest from the front, we we'll ask the patient to lean up so that we can listen from behind, okay? So Mr. Desmond, please, can you lean up? Thank you. So breathe in. Out. 
breathing out breathing out breathing out breathing out breathing out okay so deliver thank you very much so next up we want to examine the abdomen okay in patients with hepatic in with cardiac failure they could have hepatomegaly maybe tender they could also have ascites so we we'll just target our abdominal examination to examine it for the liver and to check for ascites okay so we we'll try and examine okay breathing out okay in out okay in out okay so if there's no hepatomegaly there's no liver enlargement then there's no need to go further okay then we also want to check for ascites all right so we can just do a simple um shifting dullness okay so ask the patient okay so if there's no evidence of acidic fluid there's no evidence of ascites then we'll go ahead if there is want to further characterize the ascites all right so after that we just go to the foot of the bed and check for check for pedal edema you must always be seen to be looking at the patient's face for tenderness you must do no harm to your patient while examining so in examining your patient remember to examine the pulse where you check for the rates rhythm and synchrony you examine the blood pressure check the blood pressure using your palpatory and auscultatory methods you go to the jugular venous pressure and you examine then you go to the precordium check for precordial activity is it normal active quiet or hyperactive then you check for murmurs palpable murmurs okay thrills all right from there you will now auscultate auscultate are those areas the aortic pulmonary tricuspid mitral areas then you also listen to the chest and that's how you do a cardiovascular examination.